Well, thank you very much for inviting me to talk today. Uh, and thank you very much for giving us the funds to begin this study, which has a very long title, uh, using uh, HSPMCA to analyze cerebrospinal fluid samples from patients with unconfirmed sporadic Kreutzfeldt Jakob disease and a PRNP codon 129 MV genotype to search for possible missed cases of variant CJD. So that's a bit of a mouthful. Uh, hopefully in the next 10 minutes, I can explain what that means, why we think it's important and how we intend to go about doing it. Uh, so as has been said, I'm Alex P and I work at the CJD surveillance unit with Diane up, up in Edinburgh. So as has already been very well explained, prion diseases can be sporadic, they can be genetic or acquired. And the molecular basis of these diseases is the conversion of the normal prion protein that we all express in our bodies uh, to a misfolded disease associated form. And the commonest form in humans is sporadic CJD. And well, we don't know the cause of this. It's possibly a spontaneous conversion. Um, we do know that prion diseases are affected by a polymorphism and genetic variation uh, at one particular important site called uh, codon 129. And uh, at this position, this amino acid position, it can either be methionine M or valine V. And this genetic variation doesn't cause uh, prion diseases or prevent them, but we do know that it affects susceptibility and disease characteristics and has some effect at the, at the molecular level. So because we inherit uh, genes from both our parents, we can be at we can describe our variation or genotype this site as being MM, MV, or VV. And we know this has a, an effect because the majority of sporadic CJD cases are MM at codon 129. But if you look at the general population, it's only about 40%. So you can see it's having an effect. And this was particularly the case for variant CJD. Variant CJD is an acquired form of the disease, and this has been causally associated with bovine spongiform encephalopathy, the epidemic that occurred in cattle uh, in the late 1980s and early 1990s. And this uh, graph here uh, shows the variant CJD epidemic, uh, and this was principally a, a problem of, of the United Kingdom. So. The blue bars show United Kingdom cases, but some other countries were affected, notably France. And nearly all the cases of variant CGD were MM at codon 129. And another stark feature of this disease was it affected much younger people. So it had a median age of death of 28. So um, the question is, uh, uh, we've seen the epidemic thankfully tail off uh, and most of the cases were MM. And the question is, would other genotypes, the MV genotype and the VV genotype, would they also be affected? Uh, and we know that there have actually been two cases of variant CGD identified that were MV at this site. And there's a lot of experimental evidence that suggests that these genotypes, MV and VV, that these patients would be susceptible to this variant CGD, but possibly after longer incubation periods and maybe with a, a different age profile as a consequence of that, and maybe different characteristics of the disease. So uh, in, in the lab, and now being used for diagnostics is the conversion assays, uh, and in particular, the real-time quaking-induced conversion real-time quick assay. And this is uh, uh, routinely applied by us 
in the a CGD surveillance unit to look at cerebrospinal fluid samples. And as has been described, this sort of um, uh, reproduces the prion conversion process uh, in a, an experimental setting, and it accelerates it. So you can take a small sample of uh, cerebrospinal fluid, and you add it to an excess of normal prion protein, and you subject it to certain conditions, shaking and incubation. And you can actually monitor uh, prion conversion in real time. And this technique has been shown to be very, very sensitive for detecting sporadic CJD. So we can detect uh, with a sensitivity of about 92%. Uh, but because this technique uh, is about the replication of prion proteins, it appears to be strain dependent. So it is affected by the, the subtypes of the disease. And notably, it's not effective at detecting variant CGD cases, as we understand it anyway. However, there is another conversion assay. It's actually a, a, an older technique, actually, called PMCA. And we've recently uh, modified this technique because we're constantly sort of trying to improve the assays and, uh, and tinkering around with them. And by making certain changes, th this technique, uh, we, we have got it to a sensitivity where we can detect it in variant CJD, cere cerebrospinal fluid samples, both from the MM cases and from cases, the very rare cases that were MV. It's a slightly different uh, principle behind it, where rather than shaking the samples, we're subjecting it to uh, ultrasound, but it's the same kind of principle. Uh, but for unknown reasons, actually, this is just a better technique for detecting variant CJD. So, we want to address the question of whether we're missing cases of variant CJD, uh, and this is a, a question. Now, hopefully we're not, because the, we have a robust surveillance uh, um, system, and we have advancements in, for instance, understanding neuroimaging, uh, looking at uh, patients' uh, uh, clinical features. Uh, however, if we look at the report of the last case of variant CJD in the United K the Kingdom, uh, which was an MV patient, <clears throat> it was said that this patient's clinical features differed from those of typical variant CGD, and that the neuroimaging features suggested a diagnosis of sporadic CGD. So there was a possibility that this might have been missed or misinterpreted as a case of sporadic CJD. So if we're thankfully because... Uh, uh, patients are kind enough to give their consent for us to do research on their tissues. We do have a bioresource of CSF samples uh, to work with. And many of these come from confirmed sporadic CGD cases. Uh, but by confirmed, uh, I think that usually means uh, that cases that have gone to post-mortem examination, that is the, really the gold standard for still for an absolute confirmed diagnosis. But we have quite a few from cases that are probable or possible, uh, both that are positive for RT quick, this, this sensitive test, but also we have quite a few that are unconfirmed, so probable or possible, or maybe another diagnosis, and negative for RT quick. And we would be particularly interested in applying this new technology or uh, upgraded technology to look at the negative samples from the unconfirmed cases. And we have examples of all three of the genotypes that could or one to nine to look at. So our proposal is to, um, well, address the problem that the actual decline, and there has been a decline in the rate of post-mortem uh, autos autopsies that are performed, uh, and that may affect our ability to confirm the different types of prion disease. So we've got this new technology, and it's proven to work on variant CGD prions in cerebrospinal fluid. So we want to apply this to look back retrospectively at the CSF samples that we have. And I think it's important that we apply any technological developments to ensure we have covered, a, you know, 
the full ascertainment of cases as far as is possible. And I think this will address what is still a critical public health question of whether there's evidence of variant CGD prions in one or more of these samples. And maybe we'll be able to establish this as maybe using it routinely to look at samples that are from C suspected CGD patients that are negative for RT quick. So I'd like to thank once again for the support network for giving us uh, the money to do this. Uh, I'd like to really thank the patients and relatives without your consent to work on your samples. We, we couldn't do this analysis. Um, and it's really motivating for me to, as a scientist, to come and, and meet you all here at this conference. Uh, I also want to thank my boss there, Marcelo Varia. So we work at the CGD unit in Edinburgh and we're funded by the Department of Health. Thank you very much.